you'll need to gather the following materials to complete the investigations. For the pneumatics, which is a fancy word for the power which air has when it's trapped inside something, you'll need some balloons. A 40 to 50 centimetre length of 5 millimetre diameter plastic tubing. A small dish of diluted Milton or similar mild disinfectant. A book and a sandwich bag. And a small box that has a hinge like a tea bag box. For the hydraulics, which is a fancy word for the power which water has when it's trapped inside something, you'll need plastic syringes of various sizes, 2, 5, 10 and 20 millimetre capacity. 60 centimetre lengths of 3 millimetre diameter plastic tubing that fits exactly onto the syringes so that they are airtight. A basin of water. To start with the pneumatics, put the sandwich bag on the edge of a table and place a book on it, leaving the open end of the bag sticking out. Gather up the open end of the bag and blow into it. What happens to the book when you blow into the bag? Next, use the scissors to poke a hole wide enough for the 5 millimetre tube in the tea bag box. Pass one end of the tube through the hole into the box and stick a balloon firmly over the end of the tube. You might need sellotape to make an airtight connection between the balloon and the tube. Close the box and have the children blow into the other end of the tube. What happens? Remember to use the Milton solution to clean the tube for each child as they take a turn. Younger children can also combine this activity with arts and crafts by using a box to make a monster whose mouth opens and closes as they inflate the balloon. Older children can use the syringes to investigate pneumatics. Take care that the syringes have not been used for medical purposes, and be careful that they don't fly off the tubing when they are put under pressure. To start, pull back the plunger on a 20ml syringe. Cover the other end with your finger and push the plunger down. What happens when you let the plunger go? What happens when you take your finger off the end? Next, push the plunger all the way down on a 20ml syringe and attach it to the 3mm tube. Pull the plunger on another 20ml syringe all the way out and attach it to the other end of the tube. What do you think will happen to the first syringe when you push the plunger back in on the second one? Can you compare the distance that each syringe moves? Repeat this activity using different size syringes. Do you think the syringes will move the same distance this time? Do you think there is a connection between the size of the syringes and the distances they move? When you are using different size syringes, calculate the ratio of the sizes of the syringes and measure the distances that they move. Is there a connection between the results? Moving on to hydraulics, older children can now use the basin to fill the system with water. Put two 20ml syringes and the tubing under the water to remove all the air bubbles. While still under the water, push the plunger of one syringe fully in. Now attach the tubing to it and pull the plunger out almost all the way, sucking water into it. Push the plunger all the way into the second 20ml syringe and attach it to the other end of the tube, making sure no air gets in. Now that you have trapped water in the system, you can take the syringes and the tube out of the basin. What happens now when you push down the plunger? Do you feel any difference when there is water rather than air inside the tubing? 